What is going on guys, China Rider NC. Today back in the garage, and no I haven't had a chance to clean it out, I'm sorry. But it, uh, it's time to change out this carburetor on the Magician. And uh, this is going to be a whole lot more of a task than any other bike. Uh, China bike generally hogs TBR7. TBR7, I can have the carburetor off within five minutes. And uh, this is going to be a little a little more uh, detailed and uh, into it. But I guess I will go ahead and get it started rolling for you guys. So went ahead and took off those two side panels and I will get the next step and come right back home. Alrighty guys, so this is something that some people might not know. It um be checking here. Doesn't look too bad in there. So slide this back right here to remove these panels. These right here are really just rubber grommets to hold it in place. So you can slide back. This gets a little tough to get out of that corner there, but yeah, slide back. And this panel right here will come out. This has got a little piece there. This is my battery that um I know I don't know if I showed you all that yet. I do need to put some weatherproofing stuff in here because uh that's how people burn stuff out, it's letting water get in here. And it does look like these wires do have a little bit of a pinch from this case, but no big deal, nothing we can't fix. And um Alright, so carburetor's right here, that's where I need to get to. Unfortunately on this bike it is stuffed behind here. Does not look too bad though. I'm just gonna have to take the tank off, but uh, we'll get to it. So I was just showing you how to remove these. This, uh, for future reference, this is how I did my battery here. Yeah, you know, I know this probably isn't the best. It doesn't look like any of this right here can break off and get into the airbox. If it does, then I've got a problem. But uh, I need to go ahead and seal that off anyways. I guess I'll do that before the end of the video. <laughs> but I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, guys. So y'all can see what I can see, and um, we're figuring this out together because, of course, I've never taking the seat off the magician and there's several bolts that look like it could have something to do with the seat on the magician so and i'm starting right here with this little guy 10 millimeter and if this isn't a screw i need to remove i guess i have now removed it and tightened it back so let's see here righty and i will do this on all sides so that bolt has been nice and greased up let's see here doesn't look like it had anything to do with the seat but we'll see <laughs> so set those bolts down here what's cool is oh I'll stump the oh, screwdriver what's cool is these bolts right here actually look like they're the same ones that were used on the crate assembly so cool beans well I'm gonna do the same on the other side and um, I will show y'all all the bolts I needed to remove so y'all don't have to sit here and hear me breeze trying to get these out but I'll see y'all in just a minute Alrighty guys, so I put this bolt right back in because that's not what you're supposed to do. Randy Hart over at Tactical Evolution Adventure rocks. He got a magician. Check out his videos on YouTube about his magician. He picked up my call right away and uh, told me that the bolts I need to be looking at for the seat to remove are these two right here. I'm not sure if y'all can see that. Let me take this off to make sure y'all can. Y'all can see my finger right here. These two bolts are what you need to remove the seat. And uh, cool beans. Now I knew that I can really start cooking with gas as to getting this off. I started taking off these little bolts right here. I'm thinking, okay, this looks like it could be part of the seat bracket, but you know, everything on this bike is a little more cramped than other bikes. But uh, cool beans. So I'm gonna get on taking those off, and uh, and I will see y'all here in just a second. I know this video is specific to the magician, but the carburetor part of things is the exact same. So and, uh, once y'all get to that part, you'll definitely be able to uh, to feel more comfortable because you just imagine it's coming right off the bike here because you know on the hawk the frame goes down this way in the tbr7 and you can see this you can actually reach in and pull this out after you unscrew it unfortunately that's not the case for this bike but i'll be right back all right guys so the two bolts we've got to get to are 10 millimeters as well right on the bottom of the seat i just showed y'all where they are so i'm going to get on doing those and i will be right back all right guys so for that bolt be careful because there is a washer under it and it does like to get away from you right away this is a um what do you call this an m6 1.0 I'd probably say that is 1.0 in case you lose it so you can get a replacement it uh with cool beans it's just a lock nut so uh let me go ahead and uh make sure you say that washer too it's about lost the washer thankfully I know where it went but uh yep I gotta do the other side just telling y'all to be careful with these nuts and washers alrighty guys that part is done now this seat it uh it's crazy when they come loose they really come loose but the seat should now just pick up and slide off from what I understood so Through. There we go. 
seat is now removed. And now this seat actually looks like it was upholstered. Okay, yeah, it's staple. You can see on the bottom where it's there, but I don't think this is going to come off anytime soon. No tears. It feels like it's pretty good quality, too. So that's awesome on the magician side. But uh, cool beans. So now it's time to remove the gas tank, which looks like it's too. Are those 10 millimeters? Let's see. Might be 10 millimeter everything. Nope. 8mm bolts hanging on the uh, gas tank, so we grab the 8mm and get those off and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm doing a big no-no right now. and uh, I don't know if y'all can see this, I hope you can. I am using the wrench that came with this bike, and the uh, reason being is I cannot find an 8mm socket right away, but it didn't seem to strip at first and it got loose enough where I can hand do it, so it, uh, guys, just buy good tools. Just uh, the cheapest tools at Harbor Freight are better than the tools that come with this bike, but luckily it looks like I can use this without any any uh, consequences. <laughs> but all right, this is out. Save that washer. We'll put that right here. Righty. So yep, just eight millimeter nuts here. This side is about ready. This side's gonna come out. And we should be ready to remove the tank. Oh no, there's one Phillips head screw at the top that holds the top part of the tank in place. Forget about that. There we go. Yeah, no damage, so that's good. Always worry, you use cheap tools, you strip stuff out, it becomes a bigger headache than anything, y'all. Just use the right tools if you got them. Don't be a Colin, don't be a China Rider NC. <laughs> use the right tools. And I know this video is a lot different, y'all. Uh, I've got a little bit of the sniffles. No, it's not the corona. It's the season changing. Y'all feel how cold it was this morning? Whew. What is it, 54 degrees? But, uh, that's why I want to get this riding out of my system before I'm not able to. Let me give y'all a close-up of one of these bolts just so that y'all know. And I hope y'all can hear me. I'm not sure. I've got that microphone inside the helmet. I might have to jack up the volume in the editing. I'm not sure. But uh, this is what these bolts and washers look like. Got here it looks like a 1.25 thread on this guy. Let's see that from there. Alrighty. It's done. Now it is time for the top bolt. So you know, I guess while I do that, I'll put the helmet on so y'all can see. I know this is awkward work here, but I wanted to make this video as helpful as possible instead of one of just me riding around having a good time, you know. <laughs> Alrighty. Let me put my hand here so this tank don't slide if it wants to. I do like the use of good Phillips head screws on here. This didn't reject this Phillips head at all. It didn't act like it wanted to strip or nothing. So that is a big plus for me. It makes me happy to see things like that. Hoo -doo -doo -doo. Houdini. That's what I've been thinking. What do y'all think about that name for the magician? The Houdini. <laughs> Sounds cool, but I'm sure somebody else has already done it. Changed my mind already. <laughs> Alright, cool. So it looks like we do have this wire coming off from under, which is probably has something to do with the fuel sending unit. It um, looks like it's coming straight. No, 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 no. I'm so dumb. Those are actually lights for uh, wiring for these two lights right here. Fuel sending unit is probably going to be somewhere towards the bottom, but we'll see. All right, well, I guess it's time to try and remove this bad boy and see how this goes. All right. Now, this piece right here clips onto the tank. I wonder if it does it on both sides. No. All right, it looks like it might be held on by some kind of tape or something. If I could avoid that, I would like to. Alright. There we go. Alright, that's your fuel sending unit right there. And the petcock is going right there. Awesome. So, I do need to figure out which side is off on the petcock. It doesn't really label it very well. But, that's fine. Alright, let's get this bad boy off of here for the sending unit. It's crazy all this sending unit really does is turn on a light on this bike. It doesn't have any kind of gauge for you, but Alright, let me go to this other side here. Make sure this is kind of stable. I can't really get it perfect, but I don't want it falling off and getting gas all over me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Alright, now it's just time to decide which part of the fuel lines that I want to Remove here. Alright, petcock is built into the tank. That answers a question I had a little earlier. 
<sighs> what should I do? I'm going to do it right here. All right, my trick for this is I generally use a screwdriver, and um, I don't want to use the one screwdriver that I've been using so far because I might not find another one that works as well, but I will be right back, and I'm going to get a screwdriver to plug this line. Y'all see what I do. Hi, I'm Colin on this episode of Redneck and China Bikes. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do, this is the screwdriver that came with this bike. And I'm actually not going to lie, I really do like this Phillips head. But it's the only thing I could find that I can really jam in that fuel line to keep fuel from spewing out. It looks like it's about the same size. So, well, it'll definitely do its cause there, do its purpose, I guess. But yeah, did y'all see how easy taking this tank off was and taking the seat off? It really wasn't bad. I figured it'd be a lot more intensive. And uh, Kaylin, in case you were wondering, this right here is the part that went where you were worrying about this uh, this little mud flap here. But let's go ahead and pull this little guy off. Probably get fuel everywhere. I'm hoping that's off. I believe it is. But let's see here. That is really on there tight. It does not want to go off. There we go. And there we go. So that right there is my trick, guys. It, uh, don't steal it from just playing. It, uh, <laughs> it's not great. But, oh, no, that's uh, that right there is your fuel sending unit. Okay. So that's for the LEDs, and this right here is for the fuel. So let's go ahead and undo that connector there. Guys, our tank is now off. That uh, that really was not too bad at all, so that's exciting. Let's go ahead and get this tank out of the way. And guys, I know this video is so unconventional due to what I normally do, but then again, like I said last video, what do I do that's conventional? This is what you need for uh, the bolts on the carburetor. 10 millimeter wrench, that's <laughs> request you use a decent one. This one right here has actually been a trooper for me. And this is not too bad, y'all. I've got a lot of working space once you get that off. Now all we got to do is get this little um, C-clamp. What do you call those? I can't even remember. If you know the name, just go ahead and comment it. But i got to get this right here loosened to where I can get it off of the air box. And I'm going to go ahead and switch this out. So I'll see y'all in just a little bit. Alrighty, guys. So i got my trusty Phillips head here that's been doing so good. Don't let me down. Awesome. That is a perfect little, little twist there. <laughs> I hate stripping screws, guys. It's so easy to do on these bikes, too. I love them to death, but some of the screws just aren't the best quality. But, you know, I've been told several times, uh, Dustin Seegers actually has these two. Japanese Industry Standard, I believe is the name of them. Those are the kind of screwdrivers that are meant for these kind of applications. So, definitely need to pick me some of those up eventually. And I'm sorry I'm breathing so hard, y'all. It's just it. <laughs> having this helmet on gets you hot real quick. And... It feels nice outside, and I like to not have the helmet on, but I do want to give y'all the best experience ever. So, now, figure out getting this guy off. This is loose, and uh, this is no longer the culprit. You don't want to tear these, you want to be real careful with them. Let's see here, finding an airbox for a magician is a whole lot tougher than finding it for a hawk. Of course, you could just cone filter it, but I don't know what kind of cone filter you're going to fit in there very well, so alrighty let's see here, it's got to come off that's the, the way of the road <laughs> let's see here go ahead and finish getting this out or enough where it can slide past the rest of the piece here there we go and um yeah, this is a tough one. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. So I'm going to wrestle this for a minute, and I'll come back and let y'all know how I got it out. Alrighty, guys. So it looks like I'm going to have to take a different approach. I am terrified of putting a hole, tearing, or ripping this because this is not a part I want to have to source because magician parts just aren't readily available like that. I'm sure you can rig something else up, but we might as well try and keep the parts together that are already here. So, uh what I did was went ahead and unscrewed the cap off this carburetor. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to show you all how you would do this on the new one, so if that's what you're here for. But, um, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get this going. Let's see here. And again, we do not. That moved a little too easy for me. That made me a little nervous. That shifted a little easy. But, yep. Let's go ahead and get these off. These are easy to lose, these bolts here. Uh, if y'all watched my channel, y'all saw I lost one of them inside of my TBR7's sprocket cover. I didn't realize it made it down in there and 
destroy the sprocket cover, destroyed the gear indicator, did a whole bunch more damage than, than I would have liked. I would have liked no damage, but I would definitely have taken a little less damage over that. But she's all good running now. I actually made my own front sprocket cover because I ruined the wires going to my stator, and I don't have time to be changing a stator right now, especially without help from Dustin Seegers, because that is not my area of expertise there. But, first one's off. The plan is to um, to unbolt this and to slide it back. Maybe sliding it back would make it easier for me to, uh, to get it off of here. So, I'll be right back. I'm going to do the other side. I'm doing the same exact thing I did here, so I don't want y'all to think I'm skipping steps, but I will be right back. Alrighty, my guys, so I um, got that off, got that off. I didn't tell y'all I was going to do this because I didn't think I was going to do this right away, but I did go ahead and remove this. This was only what went from your carburetor to your pet cock, so there is no inline fuel filter on the Magician, if y'all were curious, but hopefully this will make this a lot easier now, so let me let y'all see my first attempts. Can y'all believe I didn't lose one of those nuts? <laughs> I thought that was crazy. I normally always lose those nuts. It's like something was wrong. Oh, it looks like they've got something grounded on one of the bolts for the carburetor. Yes, they do, don't they? No, that's not a ground. Sorry, guys. Apologize. It uh, that right there looks like it's an assembly for some kind of cable. Now we're looking at this. Look at how short this throttle cable's got to be. That's a very short throttle cable because it only goes to right here. <laughs> that is tiny. But uh, cool beans, y'all. Well, I'm gonna wrestle this carburetor for a minute, see if I can get it out without tearing up the air box. I do think this is the best way. If I can get it out and up a little bit. And if, uh, if RPS gets all angry at us for for playing with this stuff, we got to. You don't give us an option. Look at how jetted lean this thing was. How lean jetted it was. Alright, yeah, this is a pain. I'm really scared of tearing that right down there, but I think I'm okay still. Awesome. Almost out. Almost. Almost. Alright, let's see where I'm bottlenecking at. Let's see here. This is how I'm doing it, y'all. I don't I don't want y'all to do this and have bad results and be like that's what China Rider NC said to do. I'm trying to make this easy. <laughs> so they say I'm here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> All right. Goodness, they really proved this to be the task. All right. So, off on this side. And off on that side. Awesome. All right. Carburetor is now off of here. I'm going to try and clear away. Y'all, like I said again, if there's a better way to do this, y'all please do that. <laughs> but it's just, ooh, it's proven to be difficult today. All right. Now let's get this out of the way. I was just having so much trouble getting it off of this. If this weren't giving me trouble from being so tight, just imagine what kind of trouble I'm going to have putting the new one on. But, it's for us to find out later. So you guys, I know this is a whole different kind of vibe. I'm really trying to figure something out right now, though. Alright, I'm going to get some tools to try and slide this off. So I'll be right back in just a minute.
that'll alarm some people. Like, oh no, gas is spilling. <laughs> I've smelled like gas for two days before after working on something now, so it's all good. Alright. Let's release some of that tension on that wire up there. What do y'all think? Let's go ahead and do this. This isn't the right way to do it, but y'all know I really need these moved. Alright, so that didn't do much for me at all. Maybe I can get the harness over to this side. Still not have too much tension to remove the carburetor. Yep, still too much tension. Alright. What's going on, buddy? Alrighty, guys. Neighbor came and said hello. Jason's cool, dude. It, um, check this out here. This old carburetor. The reason why we removed these and replaced them with those Makunis is because of this bull crap right here. These tamper proof screws, hard to jet, hard to adjust, and uh, this weird screw right here for you to do the adjusting with as well. Um, that is no more. So let's go ahead and put this over here. It's leaking a little bit of gas. It should dry up pretty quick. I'm sorry, Ryan. But, um, yep, yeah, so we got the parts from the carburetor here. So I'm going to put the microphone right here and show y'all a little up close. Oh, and that carburetor is out. Ooh, that was a pain. But you've got some zip ties holding this wiring in. You really want to reroute some of that. Uh, not reroute it, but loosen up some of the tension from it. So whenever you do this, it's not too straining on the wires. Because, uh, you know, that's what you want to be running around looking for. But let's go ahead and get started here. This is our new carburetor, Makuni VM26 clone. I'll put the link in the description. And I love this carburetor. I'm using the same exact one on the TBR7. But yeah, check it out. No tamper-proof screws. Uh, super simple to adjust. That's right there's your air fuel mixture. That's your idle screw. And uh, yeah, y'all. And uh, it's, it's actually a really great carburetor. So I'm going to work on trying to get this set up. And, uh, and I'll see y'all here in just a minute. So, well, no, actually, while I'm here, I might as well go ahead and show y'all how to do this. All right. So... Whenever this is actually the point of this video, what I mean, I might as well go ahead and show y'all this. I am going to show y'all this. So, this is how these work. Let me grab this over here real quick. Sorry, guys, I know this video is filled with a bunch of pointless stuff, but this right here is your slide, and this goes into the neck of the carburetor, like so. So, you see this here. This is where it goes down into, and it slides in. It's got to be lined up perfectly to go all the way in, but y'all get the gist. So, your needle. Your needle is, uh, you can set it in the middle, you can set it down low. Whenever you're having trouble with your carburetor, if rejetting doesn't really do it, you can always adjust your needle. And, uh, I've been told kind of that a needle adjustment is kind of like a two and a half change in a jet. And uh, this is just how it's done on my TBR7. So I figured, hey, why not go ahead and put it one down for this. And if it doesn't work, I can put it back up one. That'd be fine. What's it going to do? Run a little richer. Rather rich than lean in my opinion. But um, yep, so this right here, this needle slides down into this little guy. Like so, and I might confuse these steps, y'all. I don't do this every day. I just felt like there wasn't a video that really showed it up close and personal. So now that that clip's in there, this goes in here. And your retainer clip is going to sit right on top of that. So with this Makuni clone carburetor, this is the retainer clip you get. And um, what we're going to do is go ahead and set this little guy in here. All right, you want it to kind of fall right into place. All right, falls right in, and now there is a little door. So, what you want to do is spin this around. So, the inside, you see how it's not really perfectly lined up now. So you're going to spin it around, and when we spin that around. Right. That's going to allow us to line it up for when we get our throttle cable through. Righty. Cool beans. Yep, you just don't want it in the way, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> your throttle cable from working properly. Awesome. Alright, so down here, 
And now that this retaining clip is in, it is stopping this from sliding up, down, up, down, up, down, and whatnot. So that's in. And uh, let's go ahead and get started on showing you how to put it into the slide. So let me go ahead and switch this over here. Changing the slide on a carburetor whenever you're switching carburetors is important. And a lot of people don't think it is, but between these two in a minute. This slide right here, so this goes all the way up, and I'm sure that on this carb it doesn't, so this slide is different. Check it out. How different? I don't really know. Is it possible you could get away with using this one? Yeah, it's possible, but why not change it? This one came with it. So, let's go ahead and do this here. We're going to pull this up, pull this spring up all the way. And now that you've done that, you can look inside and see exactly how this is held in. So now what you're going to do is push in and up. And if you look on the other side while you do this, you can see it come out. And that's your throttle cable. So we got to get that up a little further. Like so. Oh, that was so close that time. This is the first time it's being made easy for the video. That's awesome. So if y'all see what happened there, this right here, this hole is bigger than the top of this cable. So that's why it's able to, to lock in place like that. And you can tell that the original one was the exact same way. Look down in there. You see this retaining clip right there? Out of the way of where the throttle cable is going to slide. But it holds it in place. And uh, it stops this needle from going up and down whenever the carb's not working. So this spring's going to come off. And... Now that's, uh, let's go ahead and put this slide on for this carburetor. I still have the carb off. This right here, you could do this last if you want, but, uh, I just want to go ahead and get this part out of the way. So, let's see here. You're going to put this spring down in here. And we have got to get this throttle cable fed down and through. So, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull this spring down here. So, if y'all see what I did there, I made the throttle cable free and compressed the spring with my hand. So, with the Makuni clone carburetor, it is so easy, y'all. Check this out. Right down in here. Boom. <laughs> your new throttle cable is on your new carburetor now. And, uh, yeah, so that, uh, that's that. It's out of the way. We made sure it's out of the way. Throttle cable can move freely. The retaining clip is not affecting that, so... And y'all, if I'm doing something wrong, go ahead and comment and let me know. Not if I'm doing something inconvenient. If I'm doing something wrong, because people need to see that. I'm not a master of these bikes, and y'all know that. But this is just how I do these to make things easy. So, let me go ahead and work on this jetting. I will be right back. I'm going to show y'all how to jet it. But I'm, uh, I'm also going to have to go look for my jet. So, I'll be back here in just a minute. Alrighty, guys. I'm back. I have already removed three. I completely forgot to come back. I found my jet. So, um, yeah, I only had one 110 jet. It does look a little old and crusty, but I did go ahead and run it through some carb cleaner to make sure it was good. Now, these screws right here are really important to talk about real quick. Use a good quality screwdriver and uh, really put some pressure when you're unscrewing. There's nothing more satisfying than that click noise these screws make when you start to unscrew them. But still, you really got to make sure you don't strip these out. Because if you strip them out, you're at the same exact spot with your old carburetor. You're going to have to go in there and dremel them. Try and find some way to get the screw out. I don't know if they make easy out so small. Alright, so this right here is almost out. Alright, once this finish is coming out, I've got all my stuff down here. And I'm actually going to replace those flange nuts. Those, uh, those, those yeah, flange nuts on the carburetor with some better quality ones that I picked up from last time I lost one <laughs> on another bike. Now, um, alright, we got this bowl off of this carburetor now, which is awesome. Bowl's off. And, um, we want to make sure that this is tight too before we do that. Because that right there will allow fuel to just start spewing out. I'm going to look at this. Uh, this trick Dustin Seegers taught me. Halfway is generally right. And uh, that is actually perfectly set already. So I'm not going to worry about that. This comes with the 100 main jet. And guys, this uses clean, keen, kind, clean jets. Not Makuni jets. I know you would think it would use a Makuni jet. But unfortunately it doesn't, guys. So uh, I'm going to use what I've got and try to get this off. Yeah, that was actually very easy. It, uh, this comes with a 40. Right there, you see 40. All of them do. I've had quite a few of these carburetors over the past little bit. Well, I've had two of these carburetors after the past little bit, but they, um, yeah, they work amazing. And, uh, that's a hundred main jet. We'll save it for later. I'm pretty sure I can find something for it. 
Um, alright, so now this jet right here threaded perfectly for it. It's going to go right in. And it uses keen jets, guys, not Makuni jets. The threads just aren't right. This right here is a good biting thread. And it, uh, yep, it's perfect. Now, jetting, just because I'm using a 110, nah, that's kind of all beat up, but whatever. That's good. Just because I'm using a 110 doesn't mean that you guys should be using a 110 too. You need to make sure that that's right for your elevation and whatnot. And we have people that are awesome with that in the Hawk 250 owners group. Let's go ahead and make sure. Alright, yeah, they had this all the way in. So, one and a half turns out. So, that's one half turn. It's a good starting point. You don't always want to be one and a half turns. I mean, that's pretty much really where you want to be, actually. Half turn. Full turn. Half turn. Awesome. One and a half turns out. This carburetor is ready to put the bowl back on and throw back in here, which is going to be a whole lot harder than it looks because that was hard to get out. But um, the original one was hard to get out. But, yep, that's uh, that's how this goes. It comes with a 40 pilot. And, uh, you might need to change your pilot jet depending on where you're at. 40 pilot works really well with me here. It's the exact same jetting I have in my TBR7, which just happens to be the exact same motor. So uh, let's go ahead and put this bowl back on. Because we are done. We're done. I know I should probably clean this out, y'all, but I really do not have a lot of time today, and I'm pretty sure I might come back in here and rejet sometime soon anyways. I'm sorry, guys. I really don't mean to upset anybody. I really just need people to get the gist. So if you have any comments and wise tales about things that you need to do, please drop them so people can know. It's just, I guess I'm just trying to help the people that have no clue when they look at the carburetor. Like me, I used to have no clue when I looked at the carburetor. Alright, so I like to do these right here like I do a car tire, and uh, the reason I say that is because this gasket right here, I want it to kind of have pretty even pressure on it, I don't want the metal to flex at all, and I know that's probably not a big deal, but I like to do things my way, I guess. And also, big shout out to Dustin Seegers. He has been so awesome. He's the one that really got me to where I'm comfortable taking this bike apart to do this. <laughs> and um, yeah, like it's just I have one day planned and I came out here and do it. You don't have instruction manuals really with these bikes. You have instruction videos with the Hawks and whatnot, but the magicians, there's nothing. Oh, if y'all have a Hawk right now, I'm so jealous. I've got a TBR7, which is basically a Hawk, but, uh, it, um, yeah, doing carb work on that is so much easier than this bike. But it's all, it's all fun. Now I know what I need to do. Alright, I gotta remember to put that cable assembly right back where I had it. And that was tightened under the flange. Now, it makes me curious because it's not on the other side, so it's not a perfect seal, but I guess it's not a big enough deal to worry about. Let's see here. Yeah, you would think you'd want that done evenly on both sides, but I didn't put the bike together. I kind of did put the bike together, but I didn't make it in the factory. Maybe there's a reason for it. And that's all I know. If I got an air leak, that's where I know I got to gotta start looking at. Vacuum leak, I apologize. I guess it's the same vacuum there. <laughs> Alright, so this carburetor is now on. Let's go ahead and make sure this is tight. Looks like it's out, but I think it always looks like it's out. Okay, yeah, that definitely could have used some screwing in. So that's tight now. Um, check that now, guys. I never really thought of checking that, and now I have. And that's a good thing I did, because that could have been leaking fuel out of my bowl. Let me make sure it's tight all the way now, actually. Let me give it another. Yeah, that's tight now. That ain't going nowhere. But, um... Uh, Cool beans, y'all. So now it's time to work on trying to get this guy back in. On this carburetor, the choke is the lever all the way down. If you're looking at it this way, make sure y'all know that. Might as well go ahead and show y'all. Down. Awesome. Note to myself. <laughs> but, uh, let's go ahead and put this little guy on and get this lined up. And I'll see y'all here in just a little bit. And um, it's it's really simple what I'm trying to do. It's just I can't really get in there very well with my helmet on. So uh, y'all always figure out a way to get this on. But I will see y'all in just a little bit. Quick tip, I just realized it probably would have made this a whole lot easier. This comes off, guys. And, um, yeah, that would have made getting the carburetor out a lot easier. But, uh, I got it out without it, but now I'm going to, uh, without taking it off, but now I'm going to put the new one in by taking this off, because I feel like that will make us have a whole lot better time. So, I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and get my, well, no, I might as well do it right here. Let me see if I can find that. You know, you got a limited range of motion whenever you're using the, uh, GoPro on the helmet cam. 
and uh, you can only move your head around so much. Here we go. This is 10 millimeter. I believe this is 10 millimeters for working with here. So, yeah, I'm excited to see how this little guy's going to run with this new carburetor. It's probably going to do great. Of course, 10 millimeter. All right. I don't know why I ever doubted you 10 millimeters. <laughs> it's crazy because that's kind of like channel bike standard. Alright. Fun fact about me, y'all. If y'all didn't know, I've got a small, tiny little form of dyslexia. <laughs> Self diagnosed, that's what I read on the internet, but I've always had trouble telling my lefts and rights. So lefty loosey righty tidy has always been a little tougher concept for me to understand. Alright, so I basically just see which way's looking like it's moving and which way's not. <laughs> Alright, thumbs off. Hopefully I don't think I'm an idiot now. Alrighty. Probably be a whole lot faster with the impact wrench, but I don't feel like getting back up, nor do I really want to take an impact wrench to the bike right now. <laughs> Alright, that one's done. Lining this back up might be an issue, I'm not sure. I'll probably be fine. It's crazy though, y'all. Again, like I say in my bikes, in my TBR7 videos, I would have never really thought I'd be doing this. I would have never thought I'd have the ability to do this before. It's just you. These bikes are really just the door to learning how to, to work on things. It's cool. <laughs> Dustin was talking about you. Uh, you learn how to work on these small engines, and then it's time when your weed eater stops running. <laughs> you need to figure out how to get it back, and you realize all you really need to do is go in there and shoot some carb cleaner in the carburetor. It's crazy. Generally, all China bike problems come from the carburetor for the most part, because they're cheap carburetors. Cost them probably four dollars to manufacture. And then you just throw them on. I can actually show you a link where you can buy a PZ30 carburetor for $8 a piece. Which are the ones that came on the bike. Just really tells you, is this the carburetor I want on my bike? I get it. It has to get that $1,280 price tag somewhere. And I'm glad they didn't skip out on quality where it counts. Because this bike's got a lot of cool stuff. A lot of good parts that... <sighs> that really show and make this bike shine. Alright, that'll always ride out that way. Let's see if it's easier to get in here now. Oh, I got poked by something. That hurt. <laughs> feel good. I have no clue what I got poked by. Alright, now... Let's see if this is a little easier to get down in there. Okay, so so far it looks like it is a little easier, but I'm still fighting the airbox again. So... Alright... Well, y'all, to be completely honest with you, if you're only watching this video for uh, how to do the carburetor, and since this is the same for Hawk and CG, you're pretty much done, y'all. Now all you got to do is screw this onto the top. But um, now I've just got to try and figure this out. So <laughs> and my arm is cramping on me. I need to eat some mustard and some bananas. All right, so let's try and figure this out real quick. All right, this side might be a little easier to get down into. Is it? Is it not? Alright, so I'm getting hung up on the stuff. There we go. We're starting to make some progress now. Alright. One thing I hate is breaking stuff, trying to fix stuff. I'm sure y'all understand that. Like I said, I'm still real worried about that air box. That looks like it's kind of going every which way down there but I don't really see another way to get down here easily so it is what it is there we go for the most part that is lining up so that's in and let me get my little screwdriver that I used a little earlier to get this airbox assembly back in place I know I'm being a little rough with this guys but sometimes you really gotta put some muscle into it and I know this china rubber isn't the best either but I'm 
Guys, again, if y'all have tips on how to make this go along a lot easier, please comment them for other people so they don't have to deal with what I got to deal with. It's crazy when I do stuff on my own, it's so much easier, but when you try to make a video to help somebody out, it starts to get a little tougher. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see here. Could you, yeah, I did get poked by something. I really could use some kind of lubricant, which would help a lot, but. Alright, I think for the most part, unless the bottom is keen. That's on. Awesome. Alright, so no air leak. Let's go ahead and. For the most part, we're done, guys. All I gotta do is reattach the fuel line and the petcock and the tank, and I just forgot about all we had to do to get the tank, the carburetor out. But for the most part, we're really cooking with gas. So always remember to put this retainer clip back, retainer clamp. I'm getting those hungry burps. Burger King's calling my name. I've been on a Burger King phase recently. Really like the food. All right, now let's go ahead and do this. I hope that's perfectly on, but y'all get the gist. You've got to have this perfectly on. This bike is just really tough to to get perfect. Sometimes I don't think that's going nowhere. Though that's not going to pop off. You saw how hard it was to get on. <laughs> yeah, that's on. All right, cool beans, y'all. Let's uh put these flange nuts on, and I'm. Um, Showed y'all. I told y'all about that, but I haven't really shown you yet. Replacement flange nuts for these carburetors. For any bike that uses this kind of carburetor, this is a good idea on. Because they like to round off very easily. And you just want a good quality one where if it does get tough to get off, you don't have to worry about it shipping. And these are graded bolts. I mean, graded nuts. They're, um, Dorman makes them. I'll try and find the, uh, see here. Yeah, these are the 10.8 hardened, I believe. And, uh, yeah, they're just a whole lot easier. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that. Yeah, I can definitely make that work on here. Sorry, guys. I don't even know why I had a doubt. I think they're one by two five threads, though. Yeah, let's see. This is where you got to be really careful to not uh, lose them. I feel like this right here would probably make this a lot easier. So I can go ahead and get it on a 10 millimeter. Yup, that was the play. That's the move. Go ahead and put it on there so that. Well, no, that wasn't enough to catch a thread, I don't believe. But it's enough to guide it. There we go. Awesome. It's really easy to lose these doing this. But I'm going to show you all the difference between this nut right here that's now holding this on and the nut that was holding it on before. And y'all will be like, wow, Colin, thank you so much for that information. <laughs> all right. Let's get it a couple more tightens just to make sure we're really tight. I still don't like the way that carburetor moves like that. It moves a lot. It's like this is, that's why. Yeah, it's that kind of rubber for that gasket. Look at the difference between the factory nut and this nut. Which one are you going to trust to not strip? <laughs> I'd say this one. <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead and put this other guy on the other side. Now, it is nice working on this with the seat off. I mean, it was really an inconvenience to take the seat off and the gas tank and everything, but it, uh, you don't have to worry about losing things as much because it's a whole lot easier to see them. Alrighty. Alrighty. Awesome, and if y'all made it this far, I really appreciate y'all for sure. Like I say, in all my things, it, uh, it's awesome to know that y'all appreciate the content I make enough to stay watching this long and to subscribe. It really means the world to me. I appreciate y'all a lot. And everybody that bought clusters and participates in my giveaways and stuff, it's all fun. It's what I like to do. We finished painting the house almost, and uh, I will be doing some more giveaway videos from inside the house. So, I'm hoping one day I can give away a bike. How cool would that be? It's just, you know, you gotta have the viewer count and the the means to uh, to be able to give away that bike. Cause I don't know, in my position right now, I'm not able to give away free bikes. I can give away free cool stuff like clusters sometimes, gear and whatnot.
All right, cool. Those are those four bolts. Let's go ahead and get those back on before I forget. All right, this went this way, I believe. Yep, that's how that went. And it is not perfectly even, but that's okay. I think this right here was what they did to uh, to stop gas tanks from cracking on these guys. I believe this was the remedy. I believe this was the remedy. All right. Let's go ahead and get this on. All right. Loosen this guy up because maybe that's what's going to make. Okay, yeah. Those are just going to be a little tough. It's okay. It's not the end of the world, but I'd like for them to line up perfectly. Yeah, that's 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 bad right there. Huh. Are these two needed? That's the question now. It's going to be a cross thread if it's going to work, but all right, y'all, I'm not going to let y'all see me break the motorcycle rules of cross thread, and so I will talk to y'all here in just a little bit. All right, guys, so that's how you know it's lined up perfectly. The uh, the side that says Makuni on this carburetor is going to take the long part of the slide, the long straight up, and the other one's going to take the small part, and you'll see it slide right down into place, which is awesome. All right, and the factory uh, cap was able to work with this carburetor. It's the same exact size and everything, so good to go there. You've got a nice function in throttle. Yeah. It's good. That's a smooth throttle right there, though. I don't feel much resistance. Hopefully it's not an issue, but I don't think it is. Cool beans. Well, um, alright, so let's go ahead and start putting this together. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Uh, um, this bracket right here was not right. The screws were all off in it in the first place, and um, this needs to be chiseled down a little bit for this bracket to work. And I will get on that, but as of right now, I really just want to see if this carburetor is working right now. I don't have the tools machinery here to do this anyway, so... Um, cool beans, y'all. Well, I will be back here in a little bit, and I will get on fixing this. Do not worry, guys. And, um, you can tell right here where they were. They're just not correct. So, awesome, guys. Well, I'll be back here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and put this seat back on and tank back on. Y'all saw me take it off, and, um, and I don't think y'all need to see me put it back on. But if there's any highlights that I see, I will give y'all for sure. All right, guys. The carburetor is rejetted. I'm almost out of battery. But the difference in the difference in startup already was pretty significant. Let's see here. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is insane what a little jetting can do. I do have insurance on this bike, but no plate yet, but I do want to give it a little street action, so I'm gonna go back and around this way. This brakes really need some adjusting too. That difference, there is no popping or anything. It's wild how just similar motors, the same jetting and same area. It's like there's, it was the perfect number, 110. Yeah, this thing is super torquey too, y'all. I really hope I don't run out of battery. I want y'all to see. A little bit of road footage on here and I did separate that uh get a good didn't like that hmm let's figure this out all right guys well I'm actually gonna blame that on me not knowing how to work this pet cock yet it's not really labeled and this battery really needs a good charge on it because I ran it kind of dead you know, throttle response is great. I think that was what happened. I think my pet cock was off and I ran out of fuel. Pretty sure that's what happened. Really wanted to give it a little. Yeah, I think she's good for the right now. We'll see. If I gotta push it back without a plate, I guess that's on me. 
Yeah, she just ran out of fuel. This pet car positioning, but yeah, it's uh, it's doing great, y'all. It's insane. Just that little Makuni clone car. I'm telling y'all, I swear by it. Let's see how she does up here. You definitely tell that 15 tooth front sprocket. And goodness, that is some vibration for sure. I see what people are talking about. Alrighty. These mirrors, I gotta definitely get in there and tighten them up. I gotta put the plastics back on as well. I'm slacking. I'm slacking. Yeah, it really wants to get away from you though on the that acceleration is pretty pretty significant. Hopefully I still have y'all. Alright, let's go ahead and turn back into the neighborhood here. But uh cool beans, y'all. Well, y'all saw it here. The uh, magician is properly jetted now and she's killing it. And uh yeah, I still gotta break her in, so I'm not really full throttling her everywhere, but it, uh, it was surprising so now i just gotta really take note of how that uh that sits this is such a light bike too y'all if y'all only knew how how easy this is to 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 finesse your way around somewhere but uh cool beans y'all i'm almost out of time battery's dying but i will see y'all soon thank y'all for watching